Good evening, Mayor and Councilman. As the uh, liaison to the Fair and Affordable Housing Commission, I'm here tonight to present to you the updated City of Moscow analysis of impediments to fair housing and fair housing action plan. And I just want to take a moment to introduce our commission chair, Randy Bocall. He has a little bit of a hoarse voice tonight, so he won't, won't be up to speak to you, but um, he's here to, to support this plan being adopted. So the purpose of this plan is really to document <laughs> Moscow's efforts for promoting fair housing in our community. And the document is twofold. It first describes the, the process that the commission went through um, to analyze our community's housing practices, policies, procedures, and plans that we currently have to see if there is any existing impediments to the, the provision of fair housing. And then the second part is to document action items that the commission created to address any of those identified impediments. And this enables the Fair Housing Commission to direct their efforts for the, the next couple of years. Additionally, the document will fulfill requirements of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD. Um, HUD requires grantees of the Community Development Block Grant Program to certify that they will affirmatively promote fair housing by preparing an analysis of impediments to fair housing choice, implement actions, and maintain records of relevant actions taken. The CDBG program works to ensure decent, affordable housing, provides services to most, the most vulnerable in our communities, and creates jobs through expansion and retention of businesses. So having said that, Moscow is not an entitlement city for CDBG funds due to our population, which is less than 50,000. But we can receive CDBG funds that are administered through the state. And this document can assist Moscow in being a good candidate for those funds. A little bit of background. The City Council established the Fair and Affordable Housing Commission in 1998. And the commission is empowered to review the city's analysis of impediments document on an annual basis and make recommendations to the council for amendments or changes to the plan. Here's the current makeup of the commission. We have. Um, seven members that assisted in the preparation of this document. We will be losing one of those at the end of this year, so we will have four vacancies going into the new year. The first City of Moscow analysis of impediments document was adopted in 2003 with an addendum in 2005, so there has not been an update made since 2005. And the work began on the updated, this updated plan in 2013. That work involved um, contracting with the University of Idaho Geography Department to conduct a mailed survey to assist us in identifying any impediments within the private sector. And then the commission co-sponsored three different events to learn from citizens any issues that they are having with fair housing in our community. So those involved um, co-sponsoring a social justice forum with the Human Rights Commission, the fair housing tra training with the in route and fair housing council, and a co-sponsoring tenant and landlord workshops on the University of Idaho campus with ASUI. And then in addition, the commission reviewed all city codes, policies, and plans, again, to just see if there was any existing impediments within those documents. The survey that I mentioned that the U of I assisted us with was conducted in March of 2014. There were 400 surveys that were mailed and 87 that were completed and returned, and that provided a 22% response rate. Then we emailed the survey to 1,995 students, and we had just 68 emailed online surveys completed, which was a 3% response for the, for the online survey. So combining those together, the overall response rate was just 6%, which really was not a valid response for the survey. Of those who did respond, we had a very, very little diversity in terms of race, nationality, and sexual orientation. The survey included demographic questions, income questions, household and familial status, and then collected data on renters versus homeowners separately, and students as well. And the respondents ranked factors that limit their choice and influence their choice of housing in Moscow. There were no major impediments or forms of discrimination as prohibited by the Fair Housing Act that were made apparent from, from the survey results. There was an, an identified perception of housing discrimination among respondents who indicated that they have never personally felt discriminated against. And so 21% of the respondents indicated that they think there's a housing discrimination problem in Moscow, but when asked if they personally have been discriminated against, they, they said no. And then there was a perception of income discrimination that came out of the results. 
and that being that the most significant limiting factor for the cho choice of housing was income. And it appeared that there was a rent to income ratio that reaches the housing cost burden levels for 55% of the responding renters. Due to the low response rate and the lack of diversity among the respondents, it doesn't really allow for any strong general conclusions regarding the presence of discrimination in our community and the housing cost burden levels. It's hard to, to, to strongly say that that's a real concern due to our lack of response. But, you know, we still learned some things, so I didn't want to say it's completely useless, but it just doesn't allow for some real strong concerns about discrimination. So the, as I mentioned, the second part of the document is the action plan. The commission came up with six action items that, that make up that plan. Um, the, the action items either address existing impediments that were identified or they will help to encourage the provision and maintenance of affordable housing. And the goal is for the commission to address the action items within the next three years. So the first action item comes from review of the comprehensive plan and it involves research and development of appropriate programs and partnership opportunities that will assist in the provision of affordable housing as suggested in the comp plan currently. So that might involve policies or programs that will encourage the maintenance of affordable housing when sold, funding construction and rehabilitation through trust funds, third party arrangements, um, land trusts that would help reduce the purchase price of home ownership. And this research should advise on potential levels of access for programs in Moscow and also look at um, other municipalities and programs that they have in place. Action item number two comes from review of the zoning code. Um, it involves amending the non-conforming section that currently, well, so that it would allow for reconstruction of a non-conforming structure as it existed prior to destruction. So currently, um, a non-conforming structure, if it is to be destroyed to an extent of more than 70% of the structure value, it can only be rebuilt in conformance with the, with the code. So that can sometimes result in challenges with financing and the provision of affordable housing. The third action item also comes from the zoning code and involves amending the definition of a daycare facility so that it no longer includes foster homes. Including foster homes in that definition subjects them to zoning and location limitations and that could potentially violate the Fair Housing Act. And this action item actually was, was an item within the 2003 analysis of impediments document but there was never any action taken on it so the commission wanted to keep that one. The fourth action item just involves some educational materials for increasing awareness of the state of Idaho, state of Idaho affordable housing tax credit programs. So creating some educational materials, learning more about those programs and then distributing them where possible. And the fifth action item is to conduct a survey of private sector professionals to learn more about training needs in our community and where better information dissemination is needed. This comes from the 2003 analysis of impediments document. There was a lengthy description of a survey that was conducted of all private sector housing professionals and to learn from them what kind of training they needed or what could help them, what kind of training they, they could use to better help them provide services in accordance with the Fair Housing Act. And so that hasn't been done since 2001. So it was uh, the commission's thoughts to update that survey. And the sixth action item involves, again, more training promoting educational opportunities for housing providers and this just involves continuing our annual and biennial training sessions with the Intermount Intermountain Fair Housing Council and also the tenant landlord information <coughs> sessions that they've been holding on campus. Towards the end of the document there's a section on fair housing enforcement. So we updated this data, got some data from the Idaho Fair Housing Council and just some background on them. They were established in 1996 and what they do is they provide education and outreach. They receive and investigate complaints from citizens about fair housing issues and then they refer complaints to HUD for further investigation and possible litigation. From 2009 to 2015, the, the Fair Housing Council received 80 calls from Moscow residents. 55 of those calls were considered jurisdictional cases which means that they met the criteria to be a violation of the Fair Housing Act and 49 of those 55 cases 
pertain to rental housing. So the majority is rental housing, not, not ownership. Others, a few were design and construction related and then a few were related to the sale or purchase of a home. And most of the issues were disability accommodation related with a few familial status, race, national origin issues. And then so when, when complaints are received by the, In -Route and Fair, or the Idaho Fair Housing Council, some of those are passed on then to the, the state HUD office. And 350 cases were filed with HUD for the state of Idaho for about that same time period, 2010 to 2015. 10 of those came from the city of Moscow, so 2.8% of the total cases. Half of those, so five of those cases were regarding failure to make reasonable accommodations for a disability. So again, kind of the majority is dealing with disability accommodations. And the other half were a mix of discrimination cases based on familial status, race or color, and discriminatory advertising. So just a little bit of data to, to show where Moscow stands um, in regard to complaints, fair housing related complaints. Regarding our public input process for the, the draft plan, we presented it at the Fair Housing Commission meeting in, on November 5th. We released a press release and did establish a public comment period for the month of November from the 5th to December 4th. We have received just, a, just two comments during that time. Those comments were, um, changes were implemented in the plan. And the complete draft was available on the, on the city's webpage during that time. So now we are at the City Council review and tonight we're requesting adoption of the, the analysis of impediments and fair housing action plan. And I, I failed to include the resolution in your packet, but I did put it there before you before the meeting. So we're asking for um, adoption of that resolution as well. Okay, Wayne, this was uh, in uh, Public Works and Finance as well on the 14th. Did, Becky presented uh, presented that to us last Monday, and I thought it was quite interesting. There was a couple of things that, uh, one thing that I, those of us who have been on planning and zoning, we've always been a little bit concerned about, and that is that non-conforming structures with 70% damage not being able to rebuild by right if they're not within the proper zoning area. And a prime example of that is if somebody owns a duplex and that it had been zoned R3 and now it's zoned R2 when you can't have multiple family housing mm -hmm. and it burns down or it has 70% damage, they couldn't rebuild it. So that's something that bears discussion. I don't know what the solution is, but there's something that should be done there. And then also I wasn't even aware that um, your action item number three, which uh, a daycare facility, that foster homes fall within that category too. And I was kind of surprised about that. So I think all of these... Uh, we felt that all of these bear discussion and and looking into them a little bit further. John had a point. Oh uh, yeah, question. you uh, mentioned that there were ten complaints, five of them and five of them. Uh, after reading this, I have no idea what the end result of those complaints were. Yeah. Um, well, in the document. I thought that I had referred, that I'd talked about how many of those were conciliated or not. The majority of those have been conciliated by the state HUD office. There's maybe two, I think, that were still ongoing um, being, being handled. But uh, really, I just put the data out there just to show who handles important complaints about fair housing um, and then kind of how, what Moscow looks like with, with their complaint numbers. We don't know. Other questions for Becky? And I'm guessing this is resolution 2015-23. Is that correct? Your Honor. Dan. I would uh, make a motion that we adopt this uh, analysis of impediments to fair housing and fair housing action plan and the uh, accompanying resolution. I second that. <clears throat> okay, we got a motion by Dan and a second by Art to recommend adoption of the analysis of the, to the Fair and Affordable Housing Action Plan and to also a pre-resolution 2015-23. I'll start to roll, John. Aye. 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 Okay, thank you, Becky, thank you. very much. And Randy, I hope your voice gets better. <laughs> Happy holidays to you so you can <laughs> spread some joy around here in a few days, a few days before Christmas. Thank you for coming in.